Hello, and in this video we're going to finally look at the V-series of nerve agents. And these were the most dangerous and deadly of all the chemical weapons ever devised. But the story doesn't start with VX nerve agent, it starts with a nerve agent known as VG. Now, if we want to go back even further, you'll remember in the previous time we talked about nerve agents, we talked about the German G agents, such as Tabern, Sarin and Soman. So, they were developed in the 1940s primarily, but the V-series of nerve agent, which stands for venomous, came along in the 1950s. Now, in the early 1950s, um, what would later be known as VG agent was developed, but originally this was developed as a pesticide. Now, what ended up actually happening was when this pesticide was developed, it was found to be too efficient and too deadly for actual use. So, um, Britain, Porton Down, the Chemical Weapons Research Lab, began experimenting with this VG, and they discovered that it was a very, very potent nerve agent. Now, it was actually better than the previous generation, such as Tabern and Sarin, because you needed less skin exposure to kill you, um, you know, even less inhalation amount as well, and it was more persistent, so if it was sprayed somewhere, it would linger around longer, making it a better weapon or an area denial weapon. So, if you wanted to survive it, you'd have to be wearing full NBC gear, obviously you'd need the gloves on and everything else. No inch of your skin could be exposed, similar to the German G agents, but this needed even less quantities to kill, and it was more persistent. So, very scary stuff. So, then to improve upon this, this series was later developed when it came to its head, and it was known as VX, Venomous Agent X. Now, to give you some idea of just how deadly VX nerve agent is, far less than 100 milligrams is needed to kill through skin contact. So, to put that into perspective, if you imagine the tip of a needle, the tip of the needle in theory would have enough VX on if it was, you know, just that tiny, tiny drop of VX to kill through skin contact. Even less when inhaled. Now, VX would kill relatively quickly as well, within a few minutes um, to an hour at the most, probably. Um, and obviously, the more you're exposed to, the faster it's going to kill you. Now, again, things like atropine could be used to protect yourself, but you would need to know well aware in advance that this stuff was going to be used to be able to defend yourself from it. So, VX became the nightmare weapon, because basically... A tiny amount, if used, could cause fatalities very quickly, and obviously a tiny, tiny amount would kill. But it wouldn't be used in tiny, tiny amounts as well, this is the thing. It would be used in great, great, great quantities. Basically, if you're exposed to VX, you wouldn't even have time to get your mask on, let alone an NVC suit, before it would kill you. Now, yes, you could use atropine to slow down its effects, or even cure its effects, but... The possibilities of that were very slim. To give you an idea of how dangerous the X was, it was known during the Gulf War that soldiers wouldn't have time to get their NBC gear on if they were on the front lines and exposed, so soldiers had to wear the NBC gear non-stop. Basically, if you're on the front line, you had to be in, sealed in your NBC suit with your mask on and then, you know, relieved later by other people in NBC gear. The reason being... If something as dangerous as VX was used, you would not have time to react, even if you were very well drilled at getting your NBC gear on, before it killed you. Even if you had your atropine, the chances are very slim. So, VX were kind of like the hydrogen bomb, but to chemical weapons. It was something so deadly, that if you had warheads of the stuff, you know, you could decimate entire cities with it. It was really, really, you know, scary stuff. Just the idea that, you know, something as small as what would be on a pinhead can kill you from skin contact alone. If a drop of that touched me on the skin, you know, I could be dead within 10 minutes. That's really, really frightening stuff. So, how do you protect yourself from VX? Well, you basically just have to be somewhere where VX isn't. Um, obviously, you need full NVC gear on like I'm wearing, but obviously the gloves and the boots and everything. You need to be completely, totally covered, no skin exposed whatsoever. But obviously, your chance of getting all that gear on is useless. Something like atropine can help if used correctly and in time, but again, your odds are slim. 
There isn't an easy way of surviving the X because it is a nightmare weapon. It's like saying, how do you survive a hydrogen bomb? Well, you better not be under it when it goes off. So, there were other chemical weapons developed after the X and, you know, other dangerous industrial chemicals that might be interesting to know about. If I can think of any that I think would interest people in the videos, then I will do more in this series after this. But the X was the one I wanted to primarily finish this series on because of how dangerous and scary it is. As said, you know, a pinprick amount to your skin, well, that would be enough to kill you. Not even through inhaling it, even less is needed when you inhale it. So, you went from things like chlorine during World War One that would need to be in great quantities to cause suffocation, may cause minor burns to your skin, but otherwise with a respirator on you'd be fine. And then you get to something like VX, where you need a full NBC gear on and a tiny amount touching your skin, let alone inhaled, will kill you nearly instantly. So, there you go. That's how you protect yourself from VX nerve agent, if that's even a way of saying you can protect yourself from it. Don't be around anywhere VX is used, otherwise you need to be already decked out in the full NBC gear because you don't stand a chance. Now, sadly, places like North Korea probably do have big stockpiles of VX. Um, the Soviets had some... the Soviets definitely had a V-series nerve agent, even if it wasn't VX. America still has big stockpiles of VX, quite a lot of nations still have the stuff laying around. Let's hope it's never used, because your chances are pretty much non-existent if something like VX is used.